Uh, welcome. I don't know if you clicked on it or tuned in or whatever the hell you did, but either way, you're, you've got us. Uh, us as a podcast, we've been doing it. We're doing it last summer for a while, and then it just seemed to. Uh, I didn't see it was going the way I needed to go, so it took some time. Uh, I've been doing intuitive work for about 32 years, and uh, over the time, I found uh, metaphysics and uh, the whole intuitive and energetics to be more of a instead of a religion or something like that. It's more of a, a science. A science that connects you to spirit, it can connect you to higher vibrational frequencies, and uh, actually explain a lot of the universe. I sound like Ricky Ricardo just said. <laughs> so, anyway, so uh, this is kind of where it's at. It's what I've been explaining it to people that I would teach. Uh, so this is the area I thought this should go. And so I caught a cool uh, co-host, a woman I've known for quite some time. And uh, she also seemed to be going that direction into a more, although spiritual, energetic, but uh, definitely a, a science situation. And her name is Kendall Williams. Most of you probably already know her. She's everywhere. Got a shit ton of books and shit like she has, she's going to have to explain that shit to you. I got the memory of a gnat. So here's Kendall Williams. There you go. <laughs> Thank you, Robert. Yeah. Thank you. I guess I am everywhere. Everywhere. I refer to yeah. myself as Google Happy. Google Happy. There Google Happy, yeah. She had a shit ton of books involved. You're involved in. I have co-authored with a few people, yeah. yeah. Got some good stuff that I have planned for the near future coming out. Been on Lifetime TV, a lot of different podcasts and and blogs out there yeah. worldwide. So, yeah, I'm not yeah. even going to get into it because yeah. I don't have the memory for it all. <laughs> I know, right? Well, you, you sent that to me. I was going, man, I ain't going to remember uh, this. <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, the interesting thing I saw was this, uh, what you said something about the Newtonian and that sort of thing. And the thing about it is, I think a, a lot of people ain't going to know what that is. What the heck is Newtonian? Yeah, I mean, I know who Newton is, Is that right? a stone? Is that a stone? <laughs> right, is, a, is it a is planet? It, is, it a, is it a hands-on, whatever, whatever? Uh, yeah, Newtonian. It's basically, it's a very simplified version of the predictable. Right. That would be the simplest version of how do we, pre it, it's that we predict the life that we live. Everything is predictable. We're accustomed to it. Mm -hmm. This is just like through our thoughts and our feelings, we create a predictable universe. So predictable yeah. reality for ourselves. That would be the Newtonian concept and Newtonian life that we all live. Yeah. You know, that's actually in that book I wrote that's coming out. It, it talks about how the, your intent is a lens kind of like a laser lens. Mm -hmm. All the information, all the energy, everything that's a necessity to create things, manifest things, is just in reach. And the idea is if you do intent, you're bringing in what you need, and you're literally energetically creating it. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty simple. It, and when you take it to that area, it explains so many, they're good, Ricky Ricardo. It explains <laughs> so many things, do you see? And I've actually been messing with it for a while. Um, a while back, god damn, when was that? 2010, I decided I wanted to go to Peru. Had no way of doing it. But I was there in, in 72 hours because I needed to be there. I wanted to go do the ayahuasca. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, and it worked that way. And it seems to work like that all the time, a lot of the time. You know it's what I'm applying saying? your focus to yeah. something and then just letting yourself receive it, receive right. it. it, softening is what I refer to it, soothing yourself into it, softening your energy to it. So that means to let go of the the grip that we have on something because we get into a need base around mm. it. Right. But then our Newtonian reality predicts something opposite of what we want. So yeah. our yeah. thought process goes to, yeah, but that hasn't shown up ever. Right. The lover, the money, the health, the job, the the trip, the you know, the spiritual experience. It's just oh, I'm, it's not. I haven't experienced it. That's what my history shows me, which yeah. creates my current reality, which is that Newtonian look on life. Right. So you have to break free from that and break out of the box, break out of the paradigm of what you're used to, and start to explore the possibilities through that desire and then expectation of what you're wanting and then 
basically just allowing yourself to have it, which sounds really easy, right? That just is easy. allow it's yourself true. to have it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there was a lady I was uh, talking to about it just not too long ago, and uh, she was saying, "Well, you know, I do that all the time." I said, "Well, do you?" Maybe a lot of the time you're going, "This is what I want. This is what I. This is what, but I probably won't get it. I might not get it. You know." Right. And right. So, so what's the background feeling around what you're saying? Right. Your words don't matter. Yeah. All that really truly matters is the feeling that you have. Absolutely. So my uh, advice to the people in that situation is you you go into a vision and you get as many senses of, involved as you can. What would the carpet look like in the meeting? Mm-hmm. Like right now I'm going through this thing with these producers. What would the what would it feel like to be there? What would the carpet look like? What would the walls feel like? Mm-hmm. Doesn't matter if it's true. It just means the intent. Okay, what kind of chair? Right. What would this guy be like? You know, that kind of thing. And the more you do it, the more senses you get involved, and then you can get there. Right. You know, other than that, it's just this. It's everywhere. You know what I'm saying? Well, All the pieces aren't It's together. proven over and over again, you know, because we're talking about, like, bringing the spiritual, the energetic into the, into the science of it, right? Yeah. So if you look back through history, there's been lots of scientific research and psychological research around manifestation of, of the being and how we operate in, in the athletic field. So I know that there's been lots of studies done with runners, for example, where they will actually think about running and they'll think about the race and they'll get, they will see themselves. They'll see every single move. Mm -hmm. And what happens is numerous things. Number one, it gives more clarity of thought as to what, how that race is going to go because they're setting a strong intent toward it. Their muscles actually start to react to the thought process because the, our minds can't tell reality Reality of right our our, the realities are this physical world that we live in is nothing more than what we're thinking it into existence with we and our mind cannot tell the difference between this table right here and the table that i'm thinking of that might be right there right yeah and the thing is is like there was i i remember a study myself as a there was a basketball they had three basketball squads one were just supposed to think about it the other one's supposed to practice, and one of them's supposed to just go watch TV and shut up, right? Mm-hmm. Well, the guys that just was thinking about it did just as good, as much improvement as the people that practiced it. But the other guys didn't do no better. <laughs> but there's that. See, right. it makes sense. It makes sense. The whole world is energetic, so it seems to me it's all about putting pieces together. Correct. You know Correct. But the problem is, like, like you were saying, uh, our whole existence has been governed by you got to kill yourself to get something done, you know? Right. No but pain, get, no gain. Yeah, right. right. It, like, uh, I was raised, my, my dad was all, you know, it's doggy dog, you know? You got to fight your way. If you want to get anywhere, you got to step on people to get it, you know? I always thought he's full of crap, but whatever, whatever. Well, if you look at all <laughs> statements like that, the dog eat dog world, you know, mm-hmm. there's no pain, no gain. You know, you have to earn it. You, the more you suffer, the greater your story is mm-hmm. going to be. The more you are worthy of whatever you're trying to achieve. These are the thoughts that we have around anything in our life. So it makes it where, well, until I suffer enough, then I am not worthy of achieving it. So as long as that's the background program that's running. How are we ever going to achieve something with ease? Because mm-hmm. then we go, well, I don't deserve that. So that's where the lottery winners out there, they, they come into, they fall into it, right? Yeah. And then all of a sudden you have high suicide and they can't maintain the money. They don't know what to do with it. All of a sudden it's just like this chaos it's happens their in their world. life. Yeah. is because they received it prior to what they believed they should mm-hmm. because they didn't suffer enough yeah. to earn it. You know that movie, uh, Coal Miner's Daughter? Remember that movie? Yeah, a long time ago. Oh, yeah, yeah it was a long time ago. What's her name? Uh, Linda. Loretta Lynn, right? The, they get to the Grand Ole Opry, right? And she's going, I can't be here. I haven't paid my dues. The brother goes, we'll pay them later. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and they did well, you know. But if it had a went with her energy, her vibration, that it never got there at all. Right, you know? right. So it's pretty cool. It's, it's really so, so simple, really. Just getting used to it, letting it be simple. That's the trick. That's the tough one. That's yeah. the trick. Yeah. So you teach this, right? I do. You do. I do. Yeah. Cool. How receptive are people today? Do they really zigzag on you? 
<laughs> you know what I mean? You know what I mean? As far as in their energy, well, yeah, because you run up into, you know, the programs, yeah. the barriers that they have. So they'll run along and they'll be doing good. I mean, but I'm I'm human too. That runs in, sure. you know, I'm like, I'm doing good, doing good, doing good. And then all of a sudden this program rises up that I don't even see. Something triggers it and then I hit a wall and I get stuck in the wall. Right. They get stuck in their walls yeah. as a well, mentor. That's what it's all about. Right. Yeah. But when you're teaching somebody, it's really, hey, there's your wall. There, There's there your is. shit. There's your shit. There's yeah, your yeah. shit. Hey, walk around that. Just put that down. Right. Put that down. You know, um, I, I, I use something like that myself. I, I usually say, okay, you had this problem. You were raped or you were this or that. Instead of seeing it as the wall that stops you, you're seeing the one that you can stand on. Right. You know, because ultimately, if you, in my way of thinking, is if you can get through something like that, if you go through something like that, your trophy is not letting it take you out. Right. So you can look at it as, yeah, I'm still standing. You know what I'm saying? And the more you're able to say, I'm still standing, the better you'll stand. Do you see what I'm saying? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So, uh, yeah, I've been into that. Like, you, I think you know, I, I didn't ever want to do metaphysical stuff. I was pretty happy being a drug dealer <laughs> and, and fighting and stuff but when I had kids it didn't make any sense anymore so here we are good choice it was a good choice right <laughs> but the funny thing is is that uh in order to get around it I didn't even know where I was headed with it and I had a regression and I mean we all know that there's no distance or time or anything like that not ultimately and in that uh but in that regression that I did it basically gave me the reason for the issues that I had, which is basically, you know, I wanted to make sure nobody would cross me or, you know, put, you know, that kind of thing. And, and uh, when I went through this regression, it showed me the essence of it. And once I was able to do that, I was able to unlock all these anger, what I call them anger knots mm -hmm. in my timeline, anger knots. I was able to unlock. Un unravel them down things and everything I did every time I did the intuition got better you see because now I can believe more right you and were I clearing can, your I was clearing that junk out yeah because it would be something simple like um, somebody's proximity to me would trigger it somebody a word you know could be that intense you know I mean that simple and well, complicated and that's the same thing with, you know you're talking about that but you brought up rape and everything and yeah and for anybody who's been raped, I, I'm self included on that. I can mm -hmm. tell you that those triggers are, you know, it's like somebody can walk by you and if they smell, oh. they wear the same cologne or something as the person that did, or they have a certain look or something, it's a trigger and it sets off your whole being and you're always the last one to your own trigger party. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, what right. what is off inside of me? What's going off? And all of a sudden you have flashbacks, you have memories, you have fears, you have all, you know, those anger knots come up yeah. and you have to question and like, what's going on? So then you deep dive in. That's and, the answer. But yeah. it's initially the answer. What happens is that people get so stuck on those knots of, oh, this is a trigger from this trauma, from this experience, from, whatever it is, and even in the metaphysical world, people get stuck on, oh, that was a past life thing, or that was a, an energy an thing, or that was something that stuck in my body here, emotionally, energetically, and then they fixate on it, and they focus on that in hope that they're gonna get that knot undone. Yeah. But if you just sit there and you pull on a knot, do you ever get it undone? Never does, yeah. You never get it undone. You actually have to like soften it up. Well, the energy knots and emotional knots that we deal with to increase our vibration so we increase our manifestation potential mm -hmm. is more on the lines of just put it down. Right. And right. not ignore it, but don't get stuck in the problem. Because if you're in the problem, you can't, solve the problem yeah. you have to rise above like it like the forest or the trees or something exactly like that. Yeah. there's no way that you're ever going to fix something and be able to move through it past it get stronger from it while you are residing in it right and that means that there is a an energy that we're having so when we empathize with somebody such as you know like as a woman that's experienced rape i can empathize with other women that have been raped and molested and sexual traumas right but if i bring myself to that empathy level or even worse if i have sympathy or pity for that person my energy is actually decreasing on that emotional scale right. 
right. instead of having compassion for them, which is at the same level of love, which is a higher frequency. So right. I can have compassion for that person I've experienced. So I'm coming at it from a place of love, but I'm not going to lower myself to going, oh, yeah, I know, so girl. I know. Yeah. You yeah. know, when I went through that, this is what blah, 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 blah. And if I do that, I instantly trigger that memory. I trigger the energy, that yeah. frequency back into my body and I pull myself down. So yeah. I go right into the problem and I re-knot it up instead yeah. of not being in the problem. Well, like I always see everything as vibrational resonance, um, vibrational connections and stuff like that. So if you focus on, like when people come to me, I go through their, their issues, but I go through it from an observer personality. Even if I've done had that to help in myself, I'll keep third person. Mm -hmm. And the reason is, is as you said, if you get too involved, in my way of thinking, your vibration drops down into that. Right. Then you can get really caught. And yeah. even, I've, I've had, that's happened to me before to where it even took me a couple of days to pull it out. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, but that's the whole thing is you don't want to hook into it. So you go from third person the whole time. Like even I wrote this book, I wrote this book, it's about 60% autobiographical. Mm-hmm. But it took me years to do it because I kept trying to be autobiographical, right? Mm -hmm. And I couldn't get it done. So in third person, it just flowed, you know, because I didn't want to be in that vibration still. Right. You follow? Right. But it's it's a good, it's an easy concept. I mean, and it's easily seen, you know. Um, I don't know if there's an equation for some physicist to go do that or not. But, you know, it's funny. I was asked the other day, well, how come these physicists had coming up with all this? Well, the job they're doing is physics. Mm -hmm. The shit ain't physics, right? I mean, there's not a, you can't say, okay, the a, a plus Z equals whatever the fuck. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, of course, they're trying to solve a problem with the wrong equations. Do you, do you know what I'm saying? Well, you know? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Like I was listening to that one guy, uh, black guy. Uh, I wonder if that's politically correct anymore. Anyway, darker fella. Uh, the uh, God damn, what's his name? Neil something. Degrassi. And they're hanging on, is there an afterlife? You know, is there is there a God? He don't freaking know. <laughs> no better than anybody else does. Do you see? But they're hanging on his word like this brother should know. Well, he doesn't fucking know. You know what I'm saying? This is the concept. You know, the thing is, the concept is easy, but we're coming out of a blood and guts mentality or societies, you know, like that whole everything is supposed to hurt, you know. As long as we believe that pain is supposed to be there, that our existence is based on it, then that's huh. exactly what we're going to. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, that's what's going to really evolve in our life is more pain and suffering. Yeah. I'm a firm believer. I mean, I know that when I'm in those ruts of places and my emotion starts to go down, well, I can watch my outside world materialize right according to what I'm feeling. Absolutely. And then when I'm just in it and, you know, it's like, I guess you could say the whole Cinderella thing where the birds are chirping and, you know, all the da 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 like yeah. that, you know, it is one of those moments where all of a sudden the sun really is shining in my life. Yeah. I'm more radiant. My energy is more radiant. I'm more magnetic. I, words flow easily. Coaching flows easily. Clients yeah. come in easily. Everything is because I'm in a higher vibration, more of that state of love versus that state of suffering. Do you ever feel like you're helping the people uh, like you're going home when you do that. You know what I'm when, saying? If I go for several days and I don't read anybody, which seldom happens anymore, I'll feel kind of, oh, God, you know? I need to go. I need to be there. You see what I'm saying? And I think, it's a vi again, it's a vibrational thing. Yeah, it By is. Dealing with the people, you raise your vibration, and it's like, oh, finally. You see? <laughs> I was doing Munich Key when I first, I was one of the first that brought it here. And I was doing 15 people twice a week, 15 different people. Mm. And I was going, I, I'm, I think I'm the first one that started using guided imagery with it. And so I would do the movements and all these people and I'm doing a guided imagery at the same time. And I even placed myself in this chair like this. So I didn't, rec didn't uh, 
restrict my movements. Mm-hmm. So I just let it happen. And uh, I, one day it's like I did it, and then I, I, was, I had this favorite chair, ugly damn chair. And I'll crawl back off this chair into that one. And I heard someone go, God damn, it was me. <laughs> because it was so out there. But when that would happen, I would, two or three hours in the night, everything would go blue. And then I'd feel like uh, everything was euphoric. I even called people at that time. Wow, you should see this. Because it just felt like just so euphoric. And the way I see it is, you know, I spent so much time in the, in, the, uh, in the upper vibration that it started to affect me. It'd go away, though. Mm-hmm. You know, but it was, it just, you know, it kind of really illustrated a lot of what we're saying here now. You know, your vibration stays up, you'll stay up, you know. And you can bring it up by what? Music. You can bring it up by deep breathing. Meditation. Meditation. You can bring it up by creating something you want to do that you really dig. All that works, mm-hmm. you know. So get into a happy place. What happy what makes place. you? I always tell people, you know, what what makes you laugh? Go and play. Right. Go and laugh. Laughter, joy, getting right. outside. We are we might go outside, but we look at the ground. If we if we look up, and we mm. just elevate our vision, we're going to elevate our frequency, elevate right. our thoughts, elevate our feelings, just by the simple act of not looking at the ground while we're walking, but paying attention and looking upward. Right. Or to just take a moment and go outside and, you know, like go stand in a field or in the middle of a park and allow yourself to look up above the trees and see the sky, no matter what color it is. Yeah. Just that that <clears throat> right there will start to open up your mind and open up your frequency and change the way you, you feel right. in general. You know, and that could change a lot of things. I knew a guy had leukemia and they told him, you know, six months, 10 months, whatever, whatever. Anyway, so he started taking all these vitamins, right? Mm-hmm. And he started running every day, go run, you know. And it raised his vibration, you know, the adrenaline and the energy raised because he was doing all the athletic stuff, and it went away, or it went in remission. Then he stopped. He started cheating on his wife and shit like that, and he was dead in like six months. You know, I don't think it was revenge from cheating on his wife, but it's from being in a lower vibration. He was susceptible to le- leukemia. Mm-hmm. So if he's staying in that low vibration, it's going to come back. You okay. see, but it took him out in six months. It was crazy, you know. And I would say, you know, look at the emotional frequency of what the leukemia. What does that mean at an emotional level? You know, what's yeah. what is he actually so disgusted with inside himself that's causing him to eat away at himself? Yeah. And then you said it. He was actually disgusted with his relationship. He was in an unhappy relationship. So what would it have done for him? Potentially, could he still be here had he bit the bullet, had a divorce, and actually gone and continued that path of taking care of himself, loving himself? Mm. Because that act of taking vitamins, of going out and running, being outside, those are all loving things. Mm. But he was obviously avoiding one of the most loving acts that he could do for himself which would be to be in a healthy relationship, even if that meant not to be in a relationship in that moment. But then he came back into it and crashed really quick, went and, you know, tried to find happiness in all the wrong places. And it landed him eating away at himself because the soul was going, this isn't right. This isn't, this is not who we are. This is not happiness. This is not love. Yeah. You know, it, it, sometimes it doesn't even have anything to do with whether you, are into the person. Let me let me get an example. Um, I was in a relationship not long ago, about five years ago, and nice lady, really nice lady. You know, doesn't wouldn't hurt anybody, that kind of thing. But she was everything. Everything that happened, she'd be going, "Oh, I just hope that." Oh, uh, it's like, oh God, and it literally felt like I was carrying around a bag of cement, a bag of wet cement. You know. And I was telling her, I said, I just can't roll like this anymore. You know, I mean, she was watching everything I did because mm-hmm. you know, she's worried. Anyway, um, I said, I just can't do this anymore. And as soon as it ended, it was like, uh, you know, I felt like I could get back. The weight was lifted off yeah, of you. I right. could get back to it. You know, right. But it had nothing to do with her behavior. It was just the differences between us in a vibrational level. Right. You know? Right. So it was a learning experience, definitely. 
as all re- all relationships should be. Yeah. It's like, uh, yeah, I know you, you deal with a lot of relationship situations. Like, I, I, yeah, I've been married three times, and I've been with a, sh- a lot of others. And uh, I was told, you know, this woman go, one, one woman goes, Robert, you know, three marriages, three failed marriages, really? I said, no, three good ones. They just had an expiration date. <laughs> a reason, a season, or a lifetime. Yeah, that's it. Right? And, and I could track them like that. It's like, okay, I changed here and ended there. Mm-hmm. This one changed here, then it ended here. It would it's absolutely trackable just in the changes in my own trajectory. Well, in relationship, I just actually wrote a musing and did a podcast, one of my daily podcasts, just on that topic right there, and I called yeah. them betweener relationships, you know, those, those tweener relationships where we might, we're, we're gaining from it. What are we getting education around? Typically we're learning, you know, what we really don't want in relationship. We're learning our boundaries. We're learning our non-negotiables. We're learning the things that we're willing to accept and not accept in a relationship. We're also learning about the things that we really like in a relationship because every relationship, no matter how much crap it brings us, Right? There's still those beautiful still moments. Cool There's yeah. like some really beautiful moments. Otherwise, what would be the point of ever being in the relationship? Yeah. The worst relationships, the most abusive, still have beautiful moments. That's yeah. what gets us to hang in there. And it's those little moments. Can we, now those beautiful moments often get eaten up by a whole bunch of garbage, <laughs> right? right? Yeah. But if we can focus in on, oh, this person really made me laugh a lot, then I, I love having laughter in my life. I love that playfulness that I had with that person. But man, they were too playful because they couldn't, you know, they horrible money, you know, they, could, they, they, they couldn't figure out how to pay their bills, they couldn't do this, they couldn't do that, they were just always making light of everything, couldn't take anything seriously, so it's okay, so I, I like humor, but I also like a emotionally mature person. Yeah. Right. I don't right. want them to throw a three year old tissy fit just because I was 15 minutes late home from work. Right. Accusing me of stuff that I didn't do. Right. Yeah. So or oh that's a lot of extra jealousy or need and all that. So I I like somebody who wants me, but I don't like somebody that's overly clingy and needy. Well, that's the point. Right. Needing something and wanting something is way different. Right. You see. Right. I, I have that same issue. When I think of all my past relationships had good aspects, but um, this last one, like I said, was really fucking heavy, man. And what I ended up doing is kind of going, okay, I need a break, you know? And plus, it's actually around the right time because as my life, my regular life, my, nor- my personal life transitions, mm-hmm. it wouldn't have worked. She wouldn't have able to take that transition. Right. You see? Right. And it's like you were saying, like you're in a, if you're in a relationship that is one on one and you're monogamous and you're just together, yada yada yada, monogamy is not necessarily even part of that. Whatever, whatever. Anyway, if you're both going in a same type of trajectory, not the same stuff necessarily, same trajectory. So you're both your life is changing, you know, in different what you know, whatever, whatever. Then you can you can make it happen. But a lot of times when someone changes, especially changes for the better. The other person gets threatened, then it becomes a big uh, struggle. Right. You know? Right. So people end up hanging out in a relationship, and they'll keep themselves smaller than what they should be because they're trying on. to hold on to that relationship. They're trying to keep it there because they don't want to lose the relationship. It's fear. It, it, it's scary to go. I, I've been with this person this long. I love this person. We've shared so much, and my growth, my expansion, my life changes is going to cause a separation here. So as soon as that happens, a lot of the time we shrink ourselves and then that ends up that negative spiral, much like the man that you talked about with the leukemia, Mm -hmm. probably experienced something like that where he started to, he probably should have spiraled up and then he then, oh, I can't because I have to hold on here, right? I have Mm -hmm. this responsibility, which ended up making him spiral down. And then when he came back up, but then he came back down because he was like, oh, and he was actually frustrated with the relationship, which ends up happening a lot of the time mm-hmm. where we have to recognize, you know, this this relationship has served its purpose. It's brought us both to where we need to be moving forward. And now I can call in my next level relationship. Right. That one that is aligned to me right now. Right. And, and meet that new person. Yeah. Always giving the opportunity, of course, to, you know, that new person could be the person that you're with. Right. Right. 
There's plenty of stories of that where that person goes and goes, wait a second, I can, I'm going to make changes. But they have to want to make the changes, not f- to save the relationship, but to better themselves. Right. Because anytime we try to bet, you know, save the relationship, we're not actually doing it for self, and that means it's not going to stick. Right. Yeah. You turn yourself into something you're not, it's not going to work. Yeah. Right. But it's also possible to get caught in the back and forth. For example, okay, this is what I am. You do it, and then this isn't right working, so you fall back, and then you try, you come back, and then you got to fall back. It becomes like that. I've had clients in relationships that were back and forth for 25 years, mm-hmm. and the idea is to get to a point where you just got to let it go. And you know, you, you don't have to say I don't love him anymore. You just say, yeah, I love him, but I just can't. I can't roll the same way. You know you're not in alignment. You're not in alignment. Yeah. I'll tell you a funny story is I, I was with this woman for eight years doing that same nonsense. Mm-hmm. And uh, one day we're in the bed and she goes, Robert, um, do you think we'll be together forever? Oh, shit. <laughs> you know, and doing what I do, you know, doing this work, you have to be, you know, brutally honest. And so I said, hell, I don't know. <laughs> and I it turns out it wasn't what she wanted to hear. Right. So she okay. asked me who she would be with. And I said, well, guy's name starts with an R. He goes, well, it's you. You're Robert, right? Said, no, I was like, no. And then I described the guy. And she left with him. <laughs> <laughs> she show, He showed up, you know, in the same business that I saw him in and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And she was with him, and she had actually started her to spiral down. And the reason is, is this guy was totally after her money. She made pretty good money. Mm-hmm. And uh, things got better for me once I got out of it. So it's, again, it, to me, it goes back to the vibration thing. If you're in the vibration where you have to take to have, then that, that, that can't be where I'm going to live. Right. You see? Right. But it so, seems to me it's so simple. You know what I'm saying? So uh, hopefully it become a you know, common thing. <laughs> right. Well, yeah. as long as you can get away from the Newtonian view of it. Right. Right. right? right. The expectation of always having yeah. the same person show up. Yeah, fear of change. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't have that. I love change. If things don't change for me, I'm getting weirded out. <laughs> so, but things are changing now. I mean, if you look at the whole society, it's all changing over. You know, we went through so many eons or however many years that is. Mm-hmm. You know, just following somebody. You know, there's always somebody better, always somebody smarter, or somebody that matters more. Mm-hmm. Like what we do in this country, first family, first ahead of who? You know what I'm saying? I don't have that. But the thing is, we have that. We have that, you know, I need them to make it okay for me. Mm-hmm. And that, that's going backwards. That's, that's actually infantile if you think about it. So I think what we're going through now, everything is so goddamn nuts. And it needs to be. Because wow. we need to get to a point where everybody's kind of going, okay, I got to think that through. All right. Yeah, he's saying that, and I like what he's saying, but maybe it's not true. So they have to think for themselves, and we break out of this childlike behavior. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, um, anyway, we break out of the need for, you know, daddy to save us or something like that. Yeah, the chaos has to happen. Yeah, it has to. It does. Otherwise, I as a mother of 7, I relate everything to childbirth. <laughs> <laughs> right, I bet you do. Yeah. I relate everything to childbirth. Mm-hmm. Just because that process alone is so educational. Horrendous. And, yeah. you know, if you look at the world right now, I go, "Well, we're just in labor." Yeah. That's it. It's there just labor Good and you at, know, yeah. and actually I don't think we're actually in hard labor yet because the pressure's not really there's a lot of it pressure. Can get worse, yeah. It can still get worse. I'm like, "No, we can still bounce on the yoga ball and breathe." <laughs> so, it's not hard labor yet. You know, it's like but what has to happen? You're I mean, yeah, sure, there's plenty of women that go for the epidural and everything, but if we take it back to El Natural here, you know, what what's actually going on? Well, you've got to learn how a lot to of screaming. there's a lot of there's pain. You've got to learn how to deal with the pain. You've got to go be able to go inward and be able to breathe and embody yourself. And if you look at it from a very energetic level of what's going on, we have been so up here with our technology, with the world, we're distant. And right. then you look at the whole, epi- you know, the pandemic that we've been in, what has that done? 
it's done two things. It's made us more up here. It's made us more distance. It's put a lot of fear in us. But at the same time, there's a lot more people that have gone, well, I'm bored watching this and I'm bored scrolling through that and I'm bored with that. So let's try this thing out. Yeah. And then they are doing, there's a lot more praying going on. There's a lot more meditation going on. There's a lot more, hey, I do want to learn about me. Mm-hmm. So there is kind of a, I see more of a, a true separation happening where there's really the lower frequency and the higher frequency coming on. Yeah. It's not, you're either, you're, you're in one club or the other kind of, right. you know, it's like there's no middle ground happening. A lot of the middle ground people are being forced into choosing which side to go. Right. And it's because that we have really, through this chaos, this birthing process, we've been forced into this painful situation to really just, you know, figure out, well, do I want to embody myself? Do I want to learn? Do I want to expand mm. and and find that peace, that joy, that love? Because it's got to be something more than the physical. Because right. the economy sucks. The you know I can't trust my government. I can't trust my neighbors. I can't trust my family. I can't trust 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 can't trust. Who do I have to lean on? Oh, I have to lean on me. And as negative as that can be, it can also be a beautiful process because it brings us back to us. It's an absolute process. I think. I think it's the best you can do. Because you don't have to be, think like somebody else thinks, you know, and like I, I was, I think I wrote it, I said it to you, or, you know, you try to be original like somebody, like everyone else, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, right. and uh, so, so we have a, like a time now where everything is being judged and, and uh, looked at in a negative way, even if it isn't negative, like that potato head thing, that blew my damn mind, I couldn't believe it. And the, the 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 bear, the white bear with Coca Cola. Oh yeah. What yeah. really? Yeah. There's a million and one things you, going on. You're gonna be bagging on a fucking bear, really? Uh, yeah. You know? <laughs> bears and potato heads, potato and the head. Muppets are getting it. And, oh, I you missed know, the Muppet. I, thing. Oh, you missed the Muppet thing? Yeah, yeah the Muppets are naughty. Oh my god. <laughs> Well, so they're getting ousted. And, Dr. Know, Seuss is ousted. You know, it's like it's not politically correct. All of this stuff is not politically correct anymore. Yeah. But a video where everybody getting blown to pieces. Is. That's okay. That's that okay. That don't make no freaking sense. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, not in a progressive. I know that's not going to progress. It's not going to help the progression of the society. You know? Right. Like um, when I was a kid, you're, I'm not, I think you're younger than me, but when I was a kid, if somebody got shot in a movie, they weren't allowed to show blood. All they can do is show a drop of blood coming between the fingers. Remember back then also there was the people couldn't sleep together. Hmm. Now you can't get them apart. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And people blood and guts and all kind of shit, you know, like I was watching Game of Thrones again and oh my god, you know. And how is that affecting? You see, now your entertainment is even a lower level. Mhm. So how are you going to get up if you're involved like that? Right. And uh, I had a cousin who I was complaining about that, you know. He's going, well, there's no, the study says it doesn't bother anything. It doesn't hurt anything. I said, how can you believe that? You know, you immerse yourself into some sort of visual or anything like that. It's going to drop your vibration. Anything that we create that becomes familiar to us, we also have less response to. Yeah. Uh, It's just, you know, it's, if you take, if you go back to like uh, relationship stuff you know love languages so it's believed oh you only have one primary love language well, that's a bunch of bullshit <laughs> yeah, they're right. all your love languages because i can tell you what if you stop touching anybody they're gonna all of a sudden touch is going to become a primary love language right yeah. and if you stop if you stop yeah. doing helping that person well then all of a sudden acts of service is going to become a primary love language our love languages change based on how much each language is getting fed mm-hmm. well if i'm feeding my brain a whole bunch of violence blood and guts then I'm just not going to even react to the real deal. Actually, right. I'm going to grab my phone. I'm going to be like, this is cool. I'm going to YouTube it. <laughs> That's been happening. Right? Yeah. And we see that. And we're like, what happened to the good citizens? Uh-huh. Where are they? This person's getting the crap beat out of them right here. And this person who could stop it, who could call 911, goes, wait a second. I'm going to get good ratings on YouTube. Yeah. Let me. Yeah. I, I know you're dying over there, but you but, know what? Well, hey, this is some good shit. Take a little longer so I can get a good footage here. Right, right. I'll, I'll get to nine one one. I yeah. promise. As soon as you die. I promise. As soon as yeah. you're dead. Right. Yeah. I got. I, I got all, all right here on film. <laughs> it's out of control, but we have to see past it. We got to see the power 
in the good stuff. Like this thing I was reading about Martha Ray, the old actress. She was in the um, military during the war. Mm -hmm. She like took major control. She was there to entertain, but she took major control of everything to save a bunch of people. She did amazing work. And you don't hear about that, you know? Right. And uh, because when somebody's a hero, they're only here for five minutes. Right. If you're a murderer, you're around for days, or mm -hmm. weeks, or months, or years, right. you know? So We get caught up in the drama. It's mm -hmm. fun. Yeah. It's well, you know, back in, uh, remember Rocky? When Rocky came out in 76. There was actually uh, articles about these guys would go in there and they'd watch that. They'd come out sparring on each other. You know, and that's just fighting. I mean, you go into that Sons of Anarchy, for example. Mm -hmm. So now it's about, oh, you know what? Just the other day I saw an article. This, apparently this kid got really into the Walking Dead. Mm -hmm. So he created one of those bats with the nails hanging out, and he beat this kid in the head. The kid is just totally jacked up, you know? Oh, well, yeah. And this is just some nonsense that he saw on TV. You know? And a couple years ago there was a girl, a guy who uh, – paralyzed his sister because he wanted he did a wrestling move on her right you know and this isn't what we where we need to be going you know what i'm saying so recently i've been putting posts out with people that did this heroic shit you know because that's cool to me yeah. yeah imagine imagine where our world would be if our mainstream news actually focused on the positive and oh, on yeah. those people that are doing good deeds and all the good stuff going on in our world the illnesses that are being cured, the health things that are coming up that are being good. What if you just took COVID and you focused in on all the, the people that have survived COVID? Yeah. About the stories of how they've come through it instead of focusing in on everybody who has died from COVID. Right. But actually did the, you know, those stories of like, oh my gosh, this 98 year old woman, blah, 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 blah. She, you know, like that. And we really focused in on that stuff. Or we focused in on the great deeds that are because there's there's angels among us constantly doing beautiful work, yeah. And they just get ignored, wash aside because oh no, this person over here went and you know took a baseball bat to the. Not that we shouldn't you know say okay that's crap. Yeah. Well, it but, used to be they wouldn't put no but if it's well it was a minor they wouldn't put the name. They didn't want nobody to know the name, and I think that's the answer. It's part of the answer. Then there's no fame if there's no name. You know what I'm saying? Right. Right. So that might help a Less little. fame, but, yeah. Still also, nonsense. if you just took a lot of the negativity off and applied mm -hmm. the focus towards the positive, people yeah. would then start to go, oh, our world's not bad. It's good. Right. Oh, there's a lot of good people instead of there's everybody's bad. Right. Instead of I can't trust my neighbor, it would be, oh, I could actually go and borrow, a, you know, an egg from my neighbor. Yeah. Again, because that doesn't happen in today's world. We don't borrow no, from our neighbors. Uh-uh, no, uh -uh, no, no way. Afraid somebody injected something. Or right. Whatever in a, Instantaneously, well, you know, like we even think of. Halloween thing's gotten weird mm -hmm. because the uh, people putting shit in the apples and stuff like that, right. you know. Right. But anyway, this could go on and on, you know. But it all comes down to the same thing, you know, what we're talking about, the frequencies. The higher frequency it does, it does the best stuff, and then the lower frequency is where – we really shouldn't want to live. Right. You know? It's just the idea of identifying that. And where we put our expectation. Yeah. At. Yeah. Well, like, I was, when this COVID came out, it was actually kind of funny. I, I'm so behind everything. Like, I was seeing these, I, these people was going, okay, don't touch your face. I'm going, why? I didn't know about it. I didn't know it <laughs> came, you know? Well, she said, get this virus. I said, so if you touch your face... You're gonna give yourself a virus you had? Is that what you're, is that what you're gonna do? And it's like she was all panicky. I said, you, you don't have to accept that shit, man. You know. Mm -hmm. And uh, this one lady was going, uh, "Okay, I'm sick. I I have this. I have this. Everyone has to start wearing a mask. Everybody has to start a distance." And I was telling her, I says, "You know what? I'm sorry you got those problems, but it's up to you to take care of you." And mm -hmm. you to decide you're not going to get it. In my case, I had like three of the different things that you could, that makes it easy for you to get that stuff. Mm -hmm. But I decided I wasn't going to fucking do it. <laughs> I don't want to do that. Why would I want to do that? Right. You know? Right. When I was a kid, I used to say, you have to chase a cold to catch one. You know? 
Otherwise, why would we say it that way? Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, and uh, if everybody just kind of did that, we wouldn't have near the bullshit we have right now. Cause you know what's causing? Everybody being afraid, right? So everybody's, okay, I got this, or he got that, or shit, you know. Everybody's kidding. Everybody's dying. And it just isn't the case. You know, it's like, as it is, you can get hit by a train and die. If you had any COVID in you at all, that's what killed you. Mm -hmm. You know, And all that does is keep people down, you know. Yep. Like this whole concept we're, working, we're dealing with here, even though it seems really disjointed and shit, it all the same thing. Lower vibration causes you pain. Right. High vibration doesn't. And it isn't about if you keep your vibration up, then you're delusional. No, you live there, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, the funny thing is, is when I was in my 20s, I loved fighting. I loved it better than air, you know. I loved the drugs and all this stuff, and I thought it was a happy thing. And then I got into this. There was a lot to do between then. But I got into this, again, against my own will. I got into this. And I started doing it for folks. And pretty soon I was able to reach places in euphoric places that I couldn't have imagined even with good LSD. Really. I mm -hmm. mean, to where I uh, I could, everything was so um, real and so, it, and it affected so much more than I could have done, you know, hooking and jabbing. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And as it is now, you know, I've been able to be involved in, you know, um, stopping about 12, I think 12 or 13 suicides. Makes you feel pretty good to be able to do that, you know. So I created a program. I, call it, I just call it a flex account, but it's based on helping people communicate. And the idea is when you start to communicate, you'll know this. You start to communicate, you're basically doing this mm -hmm. if it's an argument. Right. So that's never going to get anybody nothing. So I always tell them, okay, don't make any more statements. Question, use questions. Okay, you just said that to me. What are you trying to make me feel? Or this just made me think of this. Is that what you were trying to do? And what it ultimately do, you can't hurt nobody with a question. You can make them worry about it, but you won't necessarily hurt them. And so what it ends up doing is it forces the other person, the person that's being the most combative, forces them to introspect. Mm-hmm which changes all the shit again, you know? Yep. Plus what it does, when you start saying, okay, why did you do that? They're going, shit. Now I don't even know why I did that. You know, and then they're on the spot. Nobody wants to be there, right? Right. So it's actually changed some relationships, you know? And uh, another, the one that I know you you would have seen a lot is where I got these, this, I'm going to use this one woman, um, just beautiful woman. She just absolutely crazy gorgeous. But her husband didn't show her any romance. You know, he didn't hold her. He didn't, you know, talk nice to her, shit like that. Mm -hmm. And he was going like, uh, she was going, he just shows no romance, man. And we got into a session between both of them on, on different lines, you know, mm -hmm. three-way. And I says, look, you need to start showing some romance. She goes, we had sex last Last week, four times. I said, that's not <laughs> romance, bro. No. I said, it's not? <laughs> He's a poor, poor dude. He goes, it's not? No, it's not. And I said, how about this? She works on her computer a little bit. You walk up behind her. You hug her. Kiss her on the temple and tell her you're glad she's there. She will live with that for two weeks, you know, because that's what she needs. Mm -hmm. Whether you do her or not, I mean, that's a nice thing, but... It doesn't have all the components, you know. So a lot of my, uh, I have 78 clients on that particular program, and a lot of them have something to do with that, you know, mm -hmm. because not feeding each other. They think they do, but they're not, you know. Absolutely. It's pretty, Absolutely. it's interesting. Poor guys, you know, it made me feel sorry for these guys because they're like going, what am I doing? They, well, <laughs> for a man, the majority of men, it's for, they you go you access a man at his sex yeah. to get to his heart, right? And the polarity difference is that for the for a woman, the average woman out there, you have to access our heart to get to our sex. Yeah. So you have to go at, at our heart space and to the emotional level with us, make us feel loved. Yeah. And penetrate us here before you penetrate us anywhere else. <laughs> right, right? right. And guys are like, yeah, but 
But, you know, it's like, well, that's why. Yeah. And it's not just the nice dinner and the romance of, you know, flowers and jewelry and wine no, and chocolate and dinner. It's like, that's not, that's for the majority of women are like, yeah, that's nice. But yeah. that typically just has a great big sign underneath it of, I want to get laid. <laughs> yeah. you know? And that's all that it's yeah. saying, which makes the majority of women roll their eyes like, and go, oh, God, yeah, okay. Like they give them a poem, you find out it was on CNL. <laughs> Right, right. <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. We're going yeah. for what you were talking about. It's that, you know, that connection. I know that every time my guy just kisses me on the, you know, right on the third eye right there or it just gives me a look, that's going to make me a lot more connected and yeah. just drop into my heart space when I can feel him penetrating me with emotionally. When I feel that, when he grabs a hold of my hand and he looks at me in a certain way, that makes me, and it's not a sexy way, it's a loving way, loving right? Way. yeah. It's, you know, it's the little things of, oh, he, he grabbed a cup of coffee for me too. Right. You know, he brought it in. Hey, how's your day? Pops me a little kissy face text in the middle of because he knows I'm busy and everything, but it's just saying, I'm thinking about you. Yeah. Those little things. It never has to be humongous. That's the thing about romance. It's typically not the big ticket items that the woman's looking for. It's stuff. the little stuff yeah. that adds up. But you know what? As a guy, you can get addicted. I mean, first place, a guy a lot of times won't go that direction because they're afraid of looking weak, which is ridiculous. But that's what we're taught. Right. And they're afraid that the woman will start seeing too much and they'll take advantage. Because women's a streak get tricky for a lot of guys, you know, because <laughs> they don't think the same way, you know. Like I do a lot of times, you know, my husband did this and a yes, kind of a guy thing. So you need to come at it like this, so he knows. Mm -hmm. So he knows how it's affecting you. Even the other day, I told somebody, "Remember that Snickers commercial where you need a Snickers? <laughs> Give that to him. Pissed him off, but he got to thinking about it. You know. But these are things, you know. And, and as I've I've been working on this stuff for years and years and years, and I've gotten to where I'm addicted to it. I'm literally addicted to sweet talking, <laughs> and it's not a flirtatious thing. For me, it feels like I got this, like I said, that that uh, you know, one of the one of those women I would call her. Like I told her the other day on the other, other thing, I said, you know, I just thought I was thinking about you, and it was like a warm breeze going through my mind. She fucking loved that, and it was. It felt that way. Right. Yeah. Another one was that she was sitting next to me in the car, and she was complaining about her husband split her lip at some point. Mm. I said, oh man, I said that'd be like smudging a painting. She liked that. You see, right. but I didn't say it for because she would like it. I said it because I liked it saying it. Right. You see what I'm saying? Right. And that's where it's at. When you right. get there, you get past all the, it's going to make me look weak or silly or something like that. You get past all that nonsense and you can feel how it affects them. Right. Which affects you positively too. And it's like, do you see? Yep. But we're not taught like that. No. You know? So that's what I'm doing this program. I was right now. back to the. Yeah, the whole first a, topic there of the yeah. Newtonian world, you know, what we're, what we're expecting. If we are expecting that what we are saying, how we are reacting in our relationship, in our life with any subject area of our life, whatever our expectation is, then if we start to react from that place and give what we think we should give versus who we are, mm -hmm. which often who we are is going to break us out of that, you know, predictability. Yeah. It is not going to give us, it'll give us different results. Yeah. But. Well, well, like I was saying about those women is, I mean, I do that often. Matter of fact, I was in the uh, chiropractor's office and I saw this woman. She was wearing a black mask, had these beautiful blue eyes. I don't hold back, baby. I don't hold back <laughs> at all. I said, you know, I bet your husband gets lost in those eyes. <laughs> I can almost hear her start purring, you know, but I meant it. You know what I'm saying? Right. And, uh. Then I started realizing that a lot of people will see that as flirtatious. It doesn't have to be flirtatious. Do you say? We're just all confused people, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> We're taught so much shit that isn't true. Yeah. You know? And that's what needs to be happening. If you're going to do this kind of work or you're going to think in these lines, you got to start looking at, you know, what is it really, you know? It isn't necessarily what we always thought it was, you know what I'm saying? That's the only way we're going to break out. You know, just like what's going on in society. we got to look, okay, well, normally Democrats mean this. Well, no, they don't. 
maybe you know, almost like hus- uh, Republicans do that. No, that's not true either. <laughs> this information came from the news. That's true. No, no, never. <laughs> almost never, you know. What if it scrolled across on my social media feed? That's too, right? <laughs> it's like somebody somebody feels it, you know, and they go with it because that's how they saw it. Right. You know? And it's kind of a sad thing, but when we get used to it as a cup as a couple, as a society, once we get used to doing our own thinking, all this bullshit will fall away. It may take a minute though. You know. So I think that had a lot to do with the you know the uh, remember the two thousand twelve thing? You know, the world's supposed the, to be completely Oh yeah. Different. Yeah. Yeah, it was kind of calendar. overstated. Yeah. It was overstated, yeah. Um, I know I met this one woman. She was going, I was doing a, a panel, a panel discussion. And she says, well, you know, I need, you need to have me on the panel. I says, well, why do I need to do that? And she says, well, I have a specific job. I says, you do? She goes, yeah, I'm supposed to take people to that other dimension, then come back and get more and go back and forth. Really? I said, are you going to tell people that? She goes, well, yeah, that's what I says. Okay. <laughs> I put her on there, and you know what? Half the room really got into it. <laughs> it's just funny. It's just all, The whole world's freaking nuts. But it's, it's a funny nuts, right? <laughs> if you don't get caught. You know that's what I'm right. saying? Yeah. Don't get caught in the chaos. Uh, all right, baby. Well, we're going to roll out of this one. Um, thanks for tuning in and clicking or whatever it is you're doing. Um, Kendall will be with me every time because she belongs here. Do you see? Anyway, whatever, whatever. Anyway, um, we'll have different topics, of course, and, and see how it goes. If you have any, any ideas, leave them in the comments and we'll go from there. Anyway, um, enjoy your day and we'll Talk later.